Question for you. Why is it important that we have an authority checking on the inflation rate and making sure that prices grow in a stable way and grow slowly? Well, I'll just give you a flavor for it. For starters, inflation redistributes income among individuals and institutions and governments among economic ages. For instance, if you are on a fixed uh, uh, wage contract, you know, you have a three-year contract, and during those three years, uh, prices start increasing, then your purchasing power shrinks. We don't like that. We don't like that inflation, something that is out of hand, redistributes income that way. So we want to make sure that inflation is under control and we cherish the existence of a central bank. Now, you see, it is so important that uh, 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 unemployment is being kept under control as well. At least we said in the United States, this is an official target for the central bank. And how do they do it? Through interest rates. They control interest rates. Now, we spelled out uh, what the goals of the central bank, of a generic central bank are. Now let's look about the instruments, right? You have some goals and you have some instruments to achieve them. Well, how does a central bank achieve these goals? There are basically two main uh, ways, two main tools they have at their disposal. One is the policy rates, the interest rates that are maneuvered by the policy maker, the central bank, and the other one is called open market operations. So, what is the most important among the policy rates? It is the discount rate. The discount rate is what? Well, the discount rate is the interest rate at which commercial banks can borrow from the central bank. Remember, central bank is the bank of banks. They can borrow from the central bank at a given interest rate eh? by uh, giving some collateral, usually an obligation, a bond, and they can borrow and therefore they can build up that liquidity that they probably are missing if they have to go and ask the central bank. Now this is what I myself like to call the atomic bomb of instruments, of monetary instruments. The other one is open market operations. What are open market operations? Well, think of it this way. It is not difficult. When the central bank, when the governing body of the central bank feels that there is a bit too much liquidity in the economy, interest rates are too low, the economy is growing too fast, then what they can do, they are the central bank, they could withdraw liquidity from the banking system in exchange for bonds. So the central bank injects bonds in the banking system when she feels that there is too much liquidity in it and therefore it sucks uh, away liquidity from the economic system. On the other hand, when she feels there is too little, what she does is she buys bonds from the banks, paying with liquidity. You see, these are extremely powerful tools. These are incredibly powerful tools. You have to be careful about this because they are important in their own right, but also because ever since 2007, 2008, they have been taking upon an, an increasing uh, uh, amount of power that become more and more important. So what we are going to do next is to talk about the great financial crisis of 2007-2008 and see how monetary policy was transformed after that crisis.